Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. You picked a great video to start watching. This is kind of a special one. Uh, I love doing this style flies. By subscriber request, um, I'm doing a delta wing style fly today. This is an artistic fly that is just designed to look pretty and go on the wall. It's not designed for fishing. Um, so uh, I'm going to go through real quick and show you how I did it. I went through and married these up last night. It took about two and a half or three hours. Um, of course, I was watching TV while I did it, just kind of, um, you know, taking my time. But uh, if you look through the feathers, you'll see that everything is consistent in between the colors. I'll show you how I did that with the Argus pheasant. Uh, so Argus pheasant is the majority of the fly. And as you can see, these feathers are quite big and they are quite beautiful. This is one of the large ones that I've got. Um, I got this one on eBay. I don't intend to cut this one up though. Um, but there are quite a few on eBay. Uh, they're usually there all the time. So uh, if you're interested in tying flies with them, there's probably a bunch of different uses for it. Um, I love using them for salmon flies and artistic flies. And as you can see, the barb length on these is quite impressively long. Um, this is a size 7.0 hook. So you can see just how large this feather really is. Now the one I used for this fly is a significantly smaller feather. This is just the top portion of it. But it's significantly smaller. It was short, about like that. But um, still, it has some very nice long barbs to use on it. Now, Argus pheasant is one of the ones, like most pheasants, where they're used predominantly in pairs. As you can see, this would be a right side dominant feather. At least that's what I would call it. Um, as in that we would mostly use this right side for married wings and salmon flies. This left side, uh, this softer stuff that kind of juts up weird, that would do some funky things with flies that uh, I don't think we'd like. I'm sure we can find some uses for it. Um, maybe even mix it in with some fishing flies. But uh, if I were to use anything on this feather, it would be up over here on this side, but mostly on the right. So I've got my pair here. And you can see I've worked my way up these stems pretty good already. So, how I work it to get the effect that this has. Um, I select the section of the feather, which in this case I just took it from down here, and you work your way up. Now, for this fly, I started about here, about mid, midway up this gap, and I worked my way up the feather. By doing that, it keeps the pattern consistent and it keeps it flowing all the way up through all your colors. So I'll show you exactly how I do that um, and how I manage to uh, marry it all together and keep everything consistent. Now if you look, I've got two, the, the, the pattern that I'm going for here is there's two strips of color in each here there's four strips of color in each here, and there's five strips of colors in here. In between is three strips of Argus. So since I've already married these, I'm just gonna go through and do a quick demonstration uh, and just make one wing. So I'm gonna mimic this middle, uh, these middle wings, in that I've got three on the bottom, three in the middle, three again here, and then four on the top. And by doing that and starting at the bottom of your section and working your way up, you'll get that nice consistent pattern of almost like looking through the blinds. So we'll go through here, we'll find our three. Oh, that didn't work. That was interesting. Now you'll notice about Argus though, it marries very nicely and goes right back together. 
Okay. There's our three. And you take your yellow. Now you're lining up at the tips out here. You don't want to line up back here. If you end up lining up back here, your, your wing will be all over the place. You want to line up your tips so that way they're in a very gradual order getting longer. Now, the best, easiest way that I've found to do Argus when you're doing this, it's another reason that I do it the way I do, is if you line up the colors again and the barring, if you can just line it back up like you're trying to mirror this like a picture, you'll find that you'll marry really nice wings that'll flow nice and consistent at the tips most of the time. Almost all the time if you do it carefully and take your time with it. Three more. Grab the orange. Same thing, you line up the tips. And just fiddle with it. This section of orange was not terrific on the turkey. Which is why I chose it for a demonstration versus one I'm going to tie with. It's not really something that I would put into a um, presentation fly. Line up your colors. See, the way these the Argus grows the feathers grow with an angle at the tip already. So if you just line these little, these colors up, and you line these bar, the barring up as if it was right over the top, like normal, you don't have to worry about the gradual angle at the end. That'll automatically form on its own. Just follow those lines. The only one you have to worry about is the actual turkey. And then Argus on top. Just line up your line up your colors. And I had four on the top, so I'll just go four. That would be a another wing for this fly here, and uh, so now if I need one, I've got one. Now, all the other thing you can do is when you've got feathers that are a little bit damaged, which is what happened with these these turkey. You can see there's markings here and here and here. Uh, those are stress marks from the bird uh, from when it was raised. I don't really even have to take these out of the package. You can see it right in here. Um, when you've got feathers that are like that, if you buy feathers and you want to tie flies with them, um, if they're going to be for your own personal collection, you can still make a very nice looking 
wing as you can see uh, but when you present when you're gonna hang the fly up on the wall there is always a side that will face the wall so I guess you can say that if it's for your own personal fly and you don't plan on selling it or giving it to someone uh, for presentation purposes you could use that um, so that way you do get use out of that feather you can use those ones on the far side of the fly that you won't see uh, that'll be up against the back of the picture frame. Um, just a little tip to kind of help use materials so that way you don't feel like you're wasting it or that you've gotten, you know, bad material. It can be used um, several different ways. That's just one. So that's how I married the wing for these. Now let's head over to the vise and uh, start putting this together. All right, here we are over at the vise. Now the hook I'm using is a Heritage Blind Eye hook. Uh, Harrison Bartlett Bend, size 7.0. Um, I was going to use a partridge hook, size 8.0. This is the CX, CS6, and I, I don't particularly like this one. I, I don't like the bend, and I, I really don't like that um, hook point. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but I'm not a fan of that. So uh, I'm not going to use it. So instead, I'm going to use this 7.0. Now, I've gone, I don't have silk gut for this one um, that's big enough for this, so I made some silk gut substitute out of some 12 pound monofilament. Um, I'll do another video on how to do that, along with uh, a couple others like horsehair. So I'm going to go ahead and tie this in. Like I said, this fly is not going to be fished. It was not intended to, to be. It's going to go in a frame, so uh, there's no need to fully gut this or tie it in all the way to the back of the hook. I just want to have a decent enough sized eye so it looks proportionate. And then right around here. I'm going to cut this at an angle to match, well, be as parallel to the hook as we can get and make a easy smooth transition along the hook shank. Make it to be a little smoother. Oh, we're just mangling that, but that's a little better. I can make up the rest. This would be a good one to show you underbodies on. So for this one, as you can see. It's a little thicker up front than it is in the back. So what we'll do is we'll we'll create an underbody that'll um, kind of make a little better bit of a trip, better transition, and it'll thicken up this body a bit for us. I 
Okay. So in the very tail of this, uh, for the tag, I'm going to do alternating silver and gold tinsel. Because why not? The body on this, I kind of have an idea of how I want this to go, but um, yeah, I'm most definitely just kind of winging this. So. Pencils cut. I'll tie them in and back. Try to move the camera back a little bit. Now I'm going to get out my Unistretch, which, same thing as Wooly Nylon, you can get this at, you know, Hobby Lobby. Uh, I've mentioned it in some of my other videos. You can get it at Joanne's Fabrics, Hobby Lobby, Michael's, or you can get it off of Amazon. It does come in much larger spools as well, so if you run out, um, you can just re-spool one yourself. And literally the spools that you get are huge, so, and these will last forever. A lot of flies can get done with those. So, and then we're going to go through this and basically just use this to make an underbody, which is going to thicken up the body of the fly. It'll make it thicker. It'll also help blend uh, this thick area more, build up some some body in the middle to make up for that. And I have a little bit of a taper in the back here. Now you'll see I'm kind of letting a lot of thread out. Uh, that just helps get the fibers a little bit more webby and spread out here on the hook shank that lays it down flatter 
and avoids lump lumping and Same thing with rocking it back and forth. Um, as you're wrapping, rocking it back and forth kind of helps get stretch those fibers out and uh, gets them into the little grooves, the peaks and valleys in between the threads. Depending on how thick you want to go, you can let it twist up a bit and just keep going with it that way. Just make sure your thread wraps are touching, but you're going to find that you'll be wrapping for quite some time. I mean, you're wrapping for quite some time doing it, doing this anyways on such a fly, but... And you'll notice that I'm stopping shorter and shorter each time I get to the rear of the fly. That's to build up a, uh, a nice taper back there. Underbodies take a bit of time, and for you guys that are watching, I'm sure this is just short of watching paint dry. One of these days I'll figure out how to do time lapse. The thing that's nice about Unistretch um, and only nylon is it burnishes out well. So it's very easy to get a smooth result with it. See so if you see, you know, there's a little there's a little bit of lumping or piling in one spot. You can usually smooth that out with a little bit of burnishing.
Alright, and that's the majority of the underbody. Shoulders feeling that one. It's been a little while since I've done a fly this size. I'm just going to hit it with a drop of head cement up here. And that's going to soak in hold all that in place. All right. I'll grab the burnisher. Let's zoom in real quick. Let's see. There's a bit of glare, but uh, you can see that there are some some bumps and peaks and valleys. So we'll burnish this out quick and you'll see <clears throat> Sorry. I wanted to extend the tag just a little bit. And then we'll just use our thread to blend that in. Oh, that's kind of neat. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, I'm going to go with this. It's 
since this is a freestyle, sort of. I think I was just given a gift. Sometimes you just gotta go with what you're given here. This may be a detail that you're not going to see really unless you're looking, but that's okay. What I'm doing here is I'm backing off on the silver, keeping it all pinched with my left hand. That way I can tie the two tinsels off together. Reducing thread buildup. Okay, I'm going to grab the first set of wings. And these are the ones with only the two strips of turkey in each. to decide how I want these wings to sit on the fly because you can shape this fly many different ways um, you can have them all kind of swept back more you can have them all pointed upwards more you can even have some that are pointed downwards which the way these are constructed um, that's not really suitable I think these are going to be best pointed upwards Now, being the tail, it's going to be the smallest wing out of all of them, so... Take that.
Okay. We'll drop a head cement in there. Apologies. Use caution when using head cement around your, or right directly over your bobbin, like that. Uh, if you drop head, a drop a head cement in your bobbin on your thread, um, that's not good. Right, so we can shorten these up and get them out of the way for the time being. Next is going to be the ostrich hurl butt. So we'll just pick a piece of hurl. Now when you're working with hurl, you want to make sure that you're thread is definitely waxed well. Um, hurl has a tendency to roll, or slide rather. Slippage is pretty common, so. I'm using cobbler's wax, which um, it's a little cold in my house right now. It's easier for me to breathe when it's colder, so I like to... This cobbler's wax gets very hard, so I just use a lighter to heat up one little spot on it. I have to get some excess on this thread to wipe it off. Tying our pearl right on the underside here. I have a new camera set up that uh, I'll be playing with very soon, so I apologize for the bumping of the this one here. Alright, now I'm just getting as close as I can and cutting this the rest of this wing off. If you're using a fresh blade, just be careful cutting through. You got that uh, underbody under there that's very, very soft. It's very, very delicate. So get these out of here.
you'll notice that I'm holding the tail. When you're working with any of these segments, as you're doing it, it's best to hold that in place just in case. So this rear segment here is going to start with, uh, just like the wing, uh, yellow silk. So I'm going to get that spooled up right now. Alright, so the silk that I'm using is uh, that the, <clears throat> what I normally use, that... Uh, 54 Dean Street, I believe it's called Ephemera Silk. Um, it's great stuff. A, lo a lot of people use silk gloves as well while they're tying in their silk. And uh, I, I don't have the gloves, and I don't really like them. They're cumbersome, and they get in my way. And so I just use, um, I use it on the, on the bobbin. If you put it on the bobbin, you don't have to touch it. It's easy to straighten it out as you're tying. So I'm going to go with some silver embossed tinsel, which I'm using from Uni. So it's Uni French uh, medium embossed silver tinsel. Let me get some out here. And here's the label for you. Tie this in on the underside. And to go along with that, I'm going to use some medium gold oval tinsel. This, for this I'm using Vivas. Now I'm going to, uh, I'll leave the description of all the materials down below. So you can go to the description uh, of the video and it'll all be right there for you. And I want that to be on the rear side of the oval, or of the uh, embossed tinsel. So let's get the embossed tinsel a little bit farther back. So now as you rotate this around the back when you're tying it in, that determines the starting point. I want this to start kind of just out of view. So... And then we'll put the gold right there with it. I don't know how the gold is going to look on the yellow. It may hide it a little. But um, we shall see. I'm going to give you an underbelly shot there. See right where I'm tying it into. And then I'm going to tie in some of this uh, silk silver lace, which is uh, this is Japanese. Stuff. I'm not sure where it comes from or the name of, name of it even. Uh, it was a gift from a friend. Eh, not really a gift. We kind of traded materials.
Nah, it was more of a gift. He uh, he was sending this before I offered anything else. So. Haven't used any of this yet, so this will be it's kind of exciting for me. It's very, very fine. It's very, very thin, so it's probably going to be um, kind of obscure and you may not see it. But it's worth a shot. And that we're going to kind of just let kind of hang out in between the wraps of the uh, other ones. And then we'll tie that back tight to the butt. Now this time I'm going to wrap forward a bit. Get all of this tied in nice and snug in place. All I'm doing right now is flattening down that material underneath. This is all going to be silk, so... And then... I'm going to wrap to the front and... Let's finish it. And we're going to switch over to white thread. Okay, before we switch threads, we're going to measure out real quick the body. Um, how far we're going. So we have almost an exact two inches. And of course, I have a marker that doesn't want to work. There we go. Okay. Now we know where our body segments are going to be. I lost the captain marker. Okay, now we're going to switch over to our underbody material again. Tie that in up here. We'll just make our way to the back. doing now is just making up a little bit of that bump from right here where we tied in the wing and it's covering up a little bit of that tinsel smoothing out the body before we finally tie in our silk
This will start to be kind, kind of a common theme throughout the fly. Except for the fact that I mismeasured a little bit. I measured out for three. There's only going to be two. One, two. Well, there's a little bit of a mistake on my part, so no big deal. We will just change this a little bit. I'm glad I noticed. When I did. So now we just take the underbody material and keep going. I'm just filling this in. I don't know why I thought I had that many body segments. I certainly don't have enough wings for that. All right, for the time being, we're all done with this now. Just burnish out the underbody we just did. I say we a lot, but that I'm kind of referring to anybody that may be following along. And if you guys decide to give this a try, you want to follow along with it, I say we. I'm including all of you. Thank you to all you new subscribers, by the way. Um, I really appreciate you guys following along, and I'm glad that you guys like the content. Guys and gals, I should say. downside to working with an, a bobbin for your for your floss is you actually have to tie it in and then get rid of your bobbin for a minute so here we'll tie in the floss and then I'm going to tie this off
But this is not a speed thing, this is not a, a fly that I'm doing quickly. So taking the extra steps to, to do it and get the result I want, um, you know, that, that, to me that's worth it. Okay. And then we'll just wrap our floss very slowly. see by using the bobbin I'm able to keep it spread out and keep it even. It's also easy so you don't have to work with a huge length of floss. And when you're wrapping a, a body of this size, you wind up, you know, using quite a bit of floss and, uh, you know, having, having it right there on the bobbin on the spool, it really just makes it that much easier. You have as much as you need. You don't have to worry about the oils in your fingers getting in. You don't have to worry about it fraying very much, if at all. And if you have rough fingers, this is a definitely, definitely a good way for you to be able to wrap floss. So another advantage to this, uh, this style of silk, this or this brand of silk rather. All right, so now that we're back. To our midpoint. You know, something's telling me that I need to change something. I was thinking of cutting it back and then doing orange, but no, I'm going to leave it. And we'll do orange in the second section. It's just a small strip of red maybe in it. I think the wings have enough red for this fly. Once you're satisfied with your tie off and you know it's not going to come loose, give it a very light burnish, which is really all it should need at this point. Just a light, just a gentle rub. For the 
the first one, we'll do the flat or the embossed. The embossed tinsel, uh, you have to kink it. So right where it bends, find out what shape, what uh, angle you want it to be at. And then you have to kind of kink it down here to get that angle. You don't want to cut this all the way off. Leave a little tag on there just in case you have to make some corrections. And this gold one, we want to ride that right along the edge of that silver embossed. Now just like I did before I'm going to go back and I'm going to back off of the silver completely so that way I can get both of them. Just gently and very slowly wrapping this lace, making sure that you're perfectly in between the other wraps. Just take your time with it, There's no need to rush. Now this one's not together with the other two, so I'm just going to tie off, again, sorry, I'm just going to tie that off separately. I think that looks pretty nice. I am quite happy with that. Okay. Being happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and 
shorten that up these here I'm gonna keep and hide the butt over them this uh, silver oval or this gold oval you can peel off some of this outer sheathing the metal sheathing release and that exposes that thread that's at the core and uh, then when you tie that off it'll help reduce bulk right here all right next we're going to tie in the lower wing 